Uh, we're going to talk about um, the angels and malaika, but I want to first uh, greet you with uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome to um, the second Quran study meeting of the semester. Inshallah, we're going to study uh, one of the components or uh, pillars, if you will, uh, of the Iman paid today, and it's going to be uh, Malaika, angels. Can I close the door? <clears throat> oh. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, here is an outline of what we're going to do today. Uh, we are going to briefly study uh, different components of faith uh, in God, in his angels, in his uh, revealed books, his messengers, and resurrection. But we're going to uh, also study uh, interconnectedness of these different components of faith with a focus on angels, malaika. And in doing so, we're going to be uh, trying to answer the questions of how do we confirm that they, the angels, exist. And why are they uh, created? What is the purpose uh, behind their existence? And we're going to also discuss why do we need to know that angels exist? So, how is it related to us, inshallah? Uh, so, it's going to be uh, a long presentation today, but uh, I ask your patience and inshallah we're going to get there soon. So, the components of uh, faith as uh, generally described pillars of faith. In one verse uh, in the Quran it says, Kullun amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi. All of them have believed in God and his angels and his books and his uh, messages. This is a surah, uh, this is a uh, verse from the second chapter uh, of the Quran. Another verse, uh, which is kind of the opposite of it and uh, in the ayah it says whoever disbelieves in God his angels uh, his books his messengers in the last day uh, has gone far astray so it's like defining it uh, in another uh, uh, direction but uh, in this one we also see the addition of the last day uh, Muslims in general took these verses to define um, at least the first five uh, components or the pillars of faith. And as you, as you can see, the order is uh, almost exactly the same. The first verse, it uh, starts with Allah, then goes to God, then goes to Malaika, angels, uh, then to reveal books, and uh, then to uh, messengers. The second verse that I quoted here, it goes uh, uh, in the same order. Inshallah, we're going to be studying uh, these with a focus on Malaika. But why angels? So it is one component of faith, but I think that it is really important to understand uh, uh, the reasons why angels must exist. Uh, and uh, it is central uh, for us to understand other components uh, of faith. So this is how I summarize it. Knowing about the existence of angels is critical for seeing interconnectedness of all components, pillars of faith. Okay? So, for example, if uh, someone asks you, how do you know that there is a God? It's kind of an easy uh, to answer question, right? Look at the creation, there is order, there is such and such, and therefore there must be a God. His revealed books, uh, we're going to talk about it later. This universe is orderly, meaningful, there must be a translator of it. Prophets, we are human beings, we need guidance. And we look at the creation, the way it is created, the verse we see in it, and we can uh, comfortably say there must be a resurrection after this one. And we dedicated one um, session for the study of the last component, the resurrection uh, of uh, fate. But angels, how do you know they exist? And why do you need to know it? And how is it connected to all of these? So it seems like the other components of faith 
they are easy to understand, they are easy to explain, they are easy, at least relatively easier to confer. How about angels? How do you explain it? Right? Is it just a matter of faith, belief? I'm not going to say faith. Faith is different than belief. We're not going to talk about it today. <coughs> do we have any evidences that they exist, or do we just believe in them just because they are mentioned in uh, in scripture? How do you take uh, this question? How do you answer it? Or how do you approach it? Do you think that it is something like totally different from other components of faith? All the others, we can confirm them somehow, but this one is just based on uh, belief. What do you guys think? Any suggestions? Yeah. If someone asks you, you know, you're a Muslim or you're a believer, uh, and um, I hear that, uh, you know, religious people, uh, either they are Muslims, Christians, or uh, come from the uh, Judaic religion, they are all agreeing that, or somehow saying that there are angels. How do I know they exist? If they ask you the question, how are you going to answer? Probably say, we hear it. Uh, in our um, teaching, in, in, in the books that we read, and therefore we believe in it, right? That is why I think that talking about angels is important. It kind of um, fills the gaps in uh, what I call the jigsaw puzzle. It connects them all, okay? Once you find an answer to it, you see that all of them are uh, connected to each other. And they are connected to each other uh, uh, in a reasonable order, okay? That is why we're gonna be focusing on angels today. The general topic for today is studying the components, studying different components of faith, but we're gonna be doing it by focusing on angels. So, uh, I sometimes uh, hear, and I'm sure you hear that too, that uh, angels, they are about life, the uh, inner, uh, dimensions of creation or um, they are something that we cannot see but in the Quran there are verses like this which uh, are calling us to use our human uh, qualities with the guidance of the all wise Quran to answer some of these questions here is one example of it it says and do they not do they never consider the inner dimensions of the heavens and the earth if you look at uh, the words, uh, the, the word uh, for inner dimensions in Arabic uh, in this one is used as melakut. There are the outer aspects of things, but there are also inner aspects of things. When we think that there are inner aspects of things, we do not say, okay, it's about the inner aspect of things, and I stop here and I don't think about it. This verse is saying that we should actually be doing it, right? We should be thinking about it. Okay? So, inshallah, it seems like one of them stopped. I don't know why. Uh, are you brothers uh, able to see this one? Okay, inshallah, hopefully that doesn't stop. Um, okay. Um, another uh, uh, type of verses that we see uh, in the Quran believing in the unseen, like, say, for example, there are verses. Uh, in the Quran with, uh, which kind of describes believers as those who have who believe in the unseen they have faith about something that they do not see okay and there's a uh, verse similar to that uh, which is uh, uh, helping us um, know our creator and it says God is uh, the knower of the unseen and the witness. Alim al ghaib wa shahada. So, this is an example that Alim al ghaib or the unseen world, is not detached from the seen world. It's a relative concept. So, you are seeing something, but there is an aspect of it that you do not see with your eyes, but they are connected. Okay? Going back to the question, uh, going back to um, the call of Quran, which is saying, 
why don't you think about the inner dimensions of uh, uh, the heavens uh, and the earth? Okay. Now, inshallah, our purpose today is to do that. Uh, inshallah, with the guidance, uh, uh, with asking guidance from the Quran. So now, let's talk about what is life. When you look at this, what is that? Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, right? What is it? When you look at it, it reminds you of what? Just a tower? Uh, Paris. Paris. Mm -hmm. does, it ex uh, does it exist by itself? Or art. Art, art. There's some art in it. Some engineering in it. Some science in it, right? So, Eiffel Tower is something that we see. How many of you know the architect of uh, Eiffel Tower? What was the name? It's not important. We don't actually need to know. Oops. Take care of your computer. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we do not see it. Say, for example, if I uh, show the, uh, the picture of the architect or uh, the primary or whatever, uh, the leading architect, of uh, Eiffel Tower, and if I ask you, who is this person? You wouldn't know about it, right? Just a person. But when you are looking at this, you are observing something, right? It is part of the scene world. It is part of the, uh, uh, the uh, scene world, or alam shahada, right? This is something seen. But when we look at this, we can contemplate about the inner dimensions of it especially about the questions of who made it or uh, if uh, indeed uh, somebody made it or uh, built it, right? We look at it and say that it must be built by someone. It cannot exist by itself. And then the one who constructed it or designed it must have the qualities of uh, knowing science, uh, including chemistry, physics, engineering, metallurgy, you name it, mathematics, uh, geometry, right? Now we started thinking about the, the ghaib aspect of it, okay? This is something that we see, this is the only thing we see, but we can think about the inner dimensions of it, or what is behind it, the ghaib of it, okay? This is a, a part of Alami Shahade, and now we start talking about the ghaib of it. We have never seen uh, the person who designed it. But now we can understand what kind of a person uh, he must be or she must be, okay? So similarly, when you look at uh, the structure like this, right? It's a museum. We can tell that it didn't exist by itself. And it, uh, for this to happen, uh, we need to, uh, s somebody must have created it or designed it and built it, uh, constructed it. Right? with designing, with science. So now we started talking about the ghaib aspect of it, the inner dimensions uh, of it, okay? So it's just one example, inshallah. So when uh, people say that, okay, some things are just only about ghaib, we only hear about it, we have no confirmation about it. This is not, uh, as far as I understand it, this is not the way the Quran uh, uh, he is talking to us. And if you look at the Quran, there are hundreds of verses uh, calling our attentions to creation, to the creation to get to know who created it and what kind of qualities uh, does the creator, the creator of this universe has. Okay? So we're looking at Alami Shahade and we're getting to know about the Ghaib. Okay? Any questions so far? Agreed? We're gonna get to the angels. Bear with me, inshallah. Okay. When you look at the universe, what do you see? Stars. Stars in it. Galaxies. Galaxies. There are a lot of different things in it, right? Is this part of Alam Shahada? The scene aspect of it? The scene aspect of the world that we see? Right. This is what we see, right? So we looked at the uh, Eiffel Tower and we uh, asked questions about uh, 
who made it, who uh, designed it, who, who constructed it. Can we not?